Hello and welcome to the book launch for The Psychopath, uh, my new book, The Psychopath, uh, by Mary Tanner Thompson, a true story. Um, and uh, I'm here to have a chat with you and to introduce the book and also to have a chat with the lovely Michelle Lewis, who's going to be joining me just shortly. Um, I wanted to sort of say a little bit about the book before and who I am. The Psychopath is a supposedly sequel to my first book, The Bigamist, which was about my relationship with William Allen Jordan, uh, who I met in the year 2000 and married in 2002. We had two children um, and you know, a, a very fraught relationship, uh, to cut a very, very long story short, I ended up finding out that he was a bigger Mr. Con man, as well as a convicted paedophile who actively impregnates women to rip them off for money. Um, so I wrote that book in 2007 and it's been an international, be international bestseller ever since. Um, so I wrote The Psychopath last year to give a kind of update on what's happened and also to, because so much has happened, he went to jail in 2006 and he came out in 2009 and of course didn't stop what he was doing, he carried on. So The, the Psychopath is about what he did since, but also probably more importantly, from my point of view, about my recovery and the steps I took to recover and become who I am today and uh, the person that, that I am feel more, more confident, more, ca more happier myself um, and also all the information and research I've done about psychopathy and toxic people and relationships. So um, that's sort of why, why I wrote it. It was to really just share my knowledge and a lot of people over the years who have been read The Bigamist were asking me questions so I felt those questions needed to be answered. Um, and I felt that there was a lot of people that could actually benefit from my experience. When I first walked in, when I first walked into a bookshop in 2006 saying, I have just found out my husband's a bigger Mr. Con man who impregnates women to rip them off for money. And I would really like to read a book about it. The bookseller went, I not, no, not been done. So I'd walked into a publisher and said, this has happened to me and I'm going to write a book about it. And they very quickly jumped on it and said, yes. And it got published. So, you know, I do feel that there was um, a lot of people that could actually benefit from having a book about it that they could read and actually get somebody else's experience and how they had recovered from something similar. So that's kind of why I wrote it is that, you know, there seemed to be a gap and a need there for people to speak out and stand up to be counted about having been a victim of coercive control and psychological abuse. So anyway, the, the psychopath, I didn't go through the journey alone. Uh, there were lots of other people that helped me, but one in particular is Michelle Lewis, who's, who's going to join me today and have a chat with me about the book. I believe she's read it. Um, and uh, she she is a wonderful survivor of the same man, William Allen Jordan, uh, who she had a relationship with in 2014, um, 2013, 14, I think. Um, and she's a kindred spirit. Totally. She, she, she and I are the two pillars of this story on either side of the Atlantic. And she is now, I'm very pleased to say, a good friend of mine. So I would like to welcome Michelle to have a chat with me about this. So hello, Michelle. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> it is so, it is always a wonderful pleasure to be able to oh. see you and talk to you. And just oh. every time, like, it's just wonderful absolutely oh. speaking to you oh ditto it always is it's always so lovely to talk to you as well it's like there's something really quite magical about the fact that we both know exactly what each other has been through you know we exactly. have that kind of that knowledge of not not only a similar circumstance but actually the same guy <laughs> it's, it's like for it's quite sure bizarre, isn't it it's for sure fun. and it's not even just the two of us there's there's <sighs> dozens we're just the two that are the face of yeah. you know of you know, basically outing him. Yeah, and yeah. We're, we're the two that are quite happy to go on camera and talk about it, and you know, mm. sort of like we just yeah. <laughs> For there sure. are so many others. I actually, the one, the one I thought was actually um, always comes to mind the most. Uh, obviously, not going to use real names, but there was the the lovely lady who who was changing, uh, getting ready to do another shift, and she sat on the remote control, um, and NBC Dateline came on. And you and I sitting there talking about him, and she was thinking, "Oh, that man sounds like an absolute dirtbag." Uh, and then the picture came up, and she went, "Hang on a minute!" <laughs> she just turned out to be a guy she was with for two years, who just literally went out for for a pint of milk or something and disappeared, never came back. 
and never um, came back. And yeah. I, this, the entire experience has really let me believe in kismet for sure mm -hmm. that certain things happen in a certain way, in a certain sequence. And you, it yeah. makes no sense at the time, yeah. but later on, it's like it a light bulb. Yeah. You're like, wow, this happens so that this can happen so that this can happen yeah. so that this can happen. And at the time it just seems just craziness, but at the when you're at the end of it you see the entire picture together it's like puzzle pieces all along the way yeah. and then you finally get it at the end like like the day that i took a mental health day because i was exhausted and i was terrified I was reported miss <laughs> and i was reported missing like if that Police didn't looking happen for you. Yes. yes yeah if that didn't happen the the case would never have gotten started yeah. so things happen sequentially to make things work out the way they did in a positive way, for sure. Yeah. Um, it was scary at the moment, but the the outcome was great. Yeah. And I'm so thankful. And, and I'm so thankful for you because truly when I found out the truth about everything, you know, I tracked you down. I yeah. read your first book. Yeah. Binged it. I think you're overnight. Was in a night. Yeah. Overnight. <laughs> Only because I was going to see him the next day. And yeah. I wanted to be armed with everything. So I binged it that night and of course, you know, contacted you. And that is where this all started between yeah. you and I. And exactly. it hasn't stopped. It hasn't yeah. stopped. I mean, that that was, I mean, I I had initially got contacted by several people when he was released and deported from jail straight to the USA, um, from jail in the UK straight to the USA. And um, I always knew there were going to be more victims coming forward and saying, you know, Ah, I've just found out who I'm with. And we, I had three in quick succession uh, in 2009, 2010. Mm -hmm. and, and then nothing. Silence nothing. for three years. So we still don't know quite what he was doing in those that time. We know there was a few relationships. So I don't think he was in jail. Um, but, you know, sort of like just, I, I knew there was going to come a day that I was going to get, and, and the same thing, I know now we're going to get, you know, you and I are both going to get emails yeah. again from people going, oh, I just found out. Um, and will do until the day he dies, you know, because that he's never going to stop what he does. Never, but, you know, it's like, so when I got, I got your email, it'd been three years since I had the previous one. And, you must you know, have been sort of shocked like, to to, you know, to have so much silence and then finally you find yeah. somebody who was in the thick of it in that moment, like not yeah. like someone who had been, you know, been there, broke up with him, got scammed and was over it, yeah. was still it's actually still with it. him, yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's that sort of like, that, that was, although I wasn't surprised to get your email, I was actually, I was expecting it at some point. I was surprised it took so long for that email to arrive. But you know, as soon as I got the email, it was it was just like you know, yep, I'm I'm want to help. I want to do whatever I can, you know. And so and you like, replied really quickly, and I was like, oh my, like, and I, and I was like, oh my god, like this author, because like you know, I thought of you as like any other author. I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna send uh, contact me, and I'm probably never gonna hear back from her. And it was within hours that I heard yeah. back from you, and I was yeah. like, oh my god, and and you know, we you exchanged stories, and you know, that's when I downloaded the book, and and yeah went from there and it was it was you know yeah it's bizarre isn't it and we are so similar in, in so many things we're so similar in our philosophies and our uh won't go into it but politics um <laughs> <laughs> that would be a conversation sure. that we're on all day um but yeah you know so similar in our outlooks and our our sort of parenting and our positive thinking and our you know sort of the, all the sort of things we do we have such similar personalities uh and he seems so, I mean, to have sort of, like a William Jordan seems to have a, a type. Like yeah. he doesn't he picks he picks good, strong, independent women. You know, he picks yeah. like good good people, really good people. Smart because as well, yeah. The whole Smart lot of particular. us are fantabulous. Yeah, but I think I think there's the, uh, the I mean it's such a nice group of women, isn't it? But uh, I think I think also it's like that the, the more a person, more a psychopath, more intelligent a psychopath is, the more challenge they want from their victims they don't want to have somebody who's going to be you know just meekly accepting everything they want somebody who's going to challenge them because the, the biggest key that psychopaths biggest driver to a psychopath is boredom you know they uh -huh. just if things are too easy you know it's boring and they just don't want to carry on excuse me <clears throat> so it's like that the the 
every time I found in my relationship with him that things were going smoothly, that there would be some kind of bomb dropped in the conversation or there'd be something happened that made everything more dramatic again and, and made me question him and made everything uncertain. And that's what he really liked is sort of grabbing it and pulling it back in again and sort of like pulling exactly, the strings yeah. of the puppet, you know. And, and you explain it so well as cat and mouse. That is exactly mm -hmm. what it is. It is cat and mouse for sure. It is, you know, letting it go a little bit and then I got to play with that again. And like, I wonder mm. if the day that I found his real name, if he, because I feel like nothing he does is unintentional. Yeah. So when he left his wallet that day that I discovered who he truly was, mm. I feel like that was on purpose. That was he'd, because- he given you a false name, hadn't he? He did. <clears throat> he completely gave me a false name. And like we had even gone out and he had actual like debit cards in his false name, which right there is bank fraud by itself. Yeah. Um, how he was even able to open a bank account under a fake name. God knows that's a whole nother thing. But um, the day that like he never left anything behind and the day that he left his wallet just to go to the bathroom, um, I feel like now that he was probably feeling a little like it was getting a little boring. So here, let me throw this little firecracker into it and yeah. see if she'll look in the wallet. And sure enough, I did because there, yeah. I had a, a woman's intuition and I've very learned, you know, if you have an intuition feeling, if you have a gut feeling, go, for, yeah. go with it, go yeah. with it. Your gut, it will lead you wrong. It, yeah. it may take a little bit, but if something feels wrong, it's wrong. Yeah. So... I, no, I he's, he's, well. he certainly did the same thing with me. He left a wedding ring on the bed, um, uh, which wasn't a wedding ring I'd given him, you know, a man's wedding ring on the bed. Uh, and, uh, you know, sort of like, and it was perfectly made, the bed. It was complete. There was no dents in it. Like he'd sat down and it had dropped out of a pocket. No, it was like completely smooth. Which Intentionally I to, placed. I, I have to say is not usual for my bed. <laughs> <laughs> So it's not that it's not that the, you know it's always perfectly smooth or anything else so the fact that it was perfectly smooth as well was a bit of a kind of you know that's odd um mm -hmm. so he'd made the and then just placed the ring on and it's like and of course that that sort of set me off on a kind of you know where's this come from who's this and i actually looked through his bag and found out all these papers and he still managed because by that time i was so brainwashed he still managed to pull me back in um but you know it's it's it is you know he's an extraordinary extraordinary guy you know and he's it's, just it's, such a prime insane. example and he's of like smart that. he hmm. is smart like he does know a lot of things about a lot of things <laughs> like and he's very you know he does come off very charismatic and very intelligent and very you know and i did of course i did read your book <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> and um and what did you think is, by the way which yeah. is on my kindle oh, which oh fabulous so, yeah um of course i was gonna read this book because you know like <laughs> i had to know what happened next <laughs> <laughs> you want to know what the ending was <laughs> how's this end you know you wrote the one now you have another one how's this gonna happen how's this gonna go i don't know so what, what what did it feel like reading the psychopath what what did it actually feel like to you i mean being in fact that you're part of i mean sort of a really good part of that story um it was it was truly amazing and, and like i know like some people didn't like how it kind of jumped around but like i yeah. personally liked how okay. you went from past to present from past to present to past to present and going from your own personal stories to analytical chapters yeah. of of like psychopaths and like for sure your scale <laughs> i <laughs> loved that chapter about the this, this, yeah that's yes. that's the, the the psychopath checklist revised is what it's like truly ever. like if if he could have i mean he could score like an 80 out of 40 for sure <laughs> yes. like if i was like reading through i'm like yep spot on spot on spot on <laughs> spot on i was for sure. And yeah. and like, I know that you have completely immersed yourself in this content, in studying this, in researching this. And like, even I myself, I have talked to mental health professionals and said, hey, you know, and I've explained the situation. And I'm like, you know, can you give me like your feedback on what you think this is and, and whatnot? So it's not like... You know, reading, now I've read books. Uh, one of the first books I've read actually was given to me by a friend. It was called The Manipulative Man. Mm. 
All right. um, which was a wonderful read. And it really kind of helped me understand a lot more of the mental illness of William Allen Jordan. And yeah. um, your Te book also- technically, te technically not a mental illness, it's a personality disorder. It, it sure is, <clears throat> yeah. Is it um, an, an and, illness and can be recovered evolving. from? No, it's because yeah. an illness can be recovered from, which is why it's a disorder instead of an illness. Correct. Yeah. You're, yeah. And you're yeah. correct. And it's a lot of it has has changed in um, the terminology has changed, like like psychopath and sociopath, like at one point were like combined and then they were kind of like split apart and are into their own things. And it's, it's, it's not, forever it's not evolving. helpful, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's not helpful. But also the other thing is that, you know, we still use the terms uh, sociopath in, in the UK, whereas in America, uh, um, Canada, particularly where most of the, the experts are, they're, they're saying, oh, no, we don't use sociopath anymore because it's confusing. Um, you know, sort of like, it's yeah, so it's it, sociopath and psychopath are layman's terms, uh, mm -hmm. whereas the actual diagnosis is antisocial personality disorder. See, yes. I mean, this is trouble. I know too much about this stuff. I've, I've, I just, I don't study it as a, as a, a, a kind of uh, a degree or anything else. I've just, I read articles about it because I'm interested, you know. Exactly. So, um, and yeah. you educate yourself about it, and and frankly, it is fascinating. Like when, it like, it, yeah. like when I went to went to college, like I took, um, I took psychology 101, which. Mm -hmm was recommended but i actually enjoyed the class so much that when i had another elective i took abnormal psychology as an elective Ooh, because wow. the first class had me so fascinated at how the mind works and it yeah. actually you know as, as a nurse it does really come in handy yeah. um to be able to understand people and their thought process and and to try to figure it out but at the same time, like, like I beat myself up over fine. Like when I finally found out the truth about William Allen Jordan, I really beat myself up because I'm like, I'm a college educated professional. How on earth did I fall for this? And I'm pretty sure yeah. every single one of us have asked us that a thousand times. Yeah. And I'll still ask myself that. And I'm like, you know, and a lot of people are very degrading, like on the internet behind the screen. And they're like, <laughs> oh, they just, must yes. yes, they're very judgy. <laughs> And like, oh, you must have been desperate or, you know, how did you not see it? And I, people don't understand until they're there. Um, yeah. So it's easy to look on the outside in and say, oh, how did you not see that? Well, there's a lot of covert little things happening that you can't put into like some of the some of the specials and documentaries that we have done. Yeah. And there's like so much more information that is so minute that it's hard to explain and yeah. like i'm so glad in your book that you were able to try to explain some of like the the mental part of it and how it yeah. works and and how like easy. the word word salad and the projection and the, the yes. techniques they use to actually manipulate it, it took a long time for me to actually kind of work out why i had fallen for this con you know, and, and why, you know, because I mean, both of us are intelligent women and both of us, you know, are, you know, straightforward, not, you know, sort of not needy, not desperate, not, you know, neither of us were mm -hmm. desperate to be in a relationship that we would accept anything, you know. Um, and it's like I kept looking at that and then I started to hear the kind of the, the word salad, the projection that, you know, the, these mental techniques that, that and language that is used to actually manipulate people. And I just got really fascinated with language last year um so you know put all that in the book but some of it is just quite scary how people and you're can absolutely use language right to them. and but in it, reading and in reading my chapter you actually brought chapters. back a lot of memories about three <laughs> <laughs> my, a couple chapters like but the one where you actually broke down that that dunkin donuts interview um and and like in some of the information, like some of it had actually forgotten uh -huh. that had like that we had even discussed. And I was like, like it, it's if it wasn't for that, like you're right, he does talk you around in a circle. And like not until after I found out the truth and in those nine weeks of trying to set him up to confess of the crimes he did against me. Did I really pay attention that he does that? That yeah. you talk him, you ask him something direct, and then he kind of sort of gives you a little bit of an answer, but then 
in a very long way goes <laughs> all the way away from the thing to where you're on another topic and you don't realize yeah. you've gone off of the original question. Yeah. And I realized he did that quite a lot. And it was just like meandering, like on a stream, it just yeah. meandered along. And, and I just went with it because it was just keeping conversation because flowing. Because we do. Because that's what we do in, in normal lateral conversation. That's what we do. But it's like, just, just to give some context, when Michelle found out that Will Jordan was the Will Jordan that I'd written about, she actually got hidden cameras and a bag cam and a button cam and she carried on stringing him along and um, she she actually recorded him in a series of, of videos which she shared with me and actually we had the transcripts of in in the site some of the transcripts of in the psychopath but she actually managed to to pretend that she was still in a relationship with him i mean just <laughs> not worthy uh i mean the, the acting was fabulous because you know you, you were you were sort of sounding vulnerable and you know, and as if you were, you know, sort of like, okay, right, you know, sort of like, so explain this to me. And you actually got to got him to explain everything away, including his paedophile convictions, including, you know, being married to two women at once, you know, and everything. Uh, and An excuse just, for everything. He had amazing. a story for everything, yeah. everything. Including, including being a convicted paedophile. Um, I just, and it sounded all so reasonable, um, but uh, it's fascinating. I mean, I have to say those videos were fascinating. It's such an amazing opportunity to be able to analyze somebody's language patterns. And I have to say, actually, I have to say to you, Michelle, we've just finished the, the, the audio book, which is it's going to be available for Monday as well. And I've just received a copy yesterday. And when I was doing the audio book and we were recording it, I couldn't read out his bits. <laughs> I could read out your bits fine. I couldn't read out his bits. And I was just going, I can't do this. I literally I can't do this. Out. And it's so, it's so impossible. It, to, when you're reading it as, as a transcript, you're just going, what? You know, so I said, look, and they got two actors to do it. So the person <laughs> playing you is absolutely spot on, gets you perfectly. The one playing him, I mean, I don't, I, I don't, I, I I can't criticize it because it's an impossible task, but he's he's reading out this word salad and this complete nonsense. <laughs> it's like the it's so hard. It's very hard it's to emulate. It's so hard to do. Yeah. So it's like you know, it's, it's slightly slightly awkward, but it's slightly I think slightly better hearing it than it is reading it. So, uh, but yeah, if you want to hear the actual, you know, sort of like you know, uh, uh, we, unfortunately we couldn't use the real audio um because it was it was so um there's so much background noise yeah so much background noise but also it's because it's actually his voice and his performance so uh <laughs> 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 we couldn't use it but yeah it's really interesting but yeah. it, it is it is definitely it's it's crazy and like even now like like at the time i felt so fueled by the perseverance to stop him like looking uh -huh. back on it, I'm like, wow, that was really crazy. <laughs> I'm like, but at the time I was so fueled by like, I've got to stop this guy. I've got to stop this guy. Like, you know, once you told me story after story after story of all these victims that happened before me, and I was like, this has got to stop. This has got uh -huh. to stop. And I've got to figure it out. And <laughs> thankfully I had your guidance and the guidance of the others because we, we all came together. Yeah. And we formed our little village, which I love our little village. It's brilliant, um, isn't it? Yeah. It's, and like our village is growing, unfortunately, but you know, we take everybody in and we help everybody out. And like at the time I was new to it and you girls had already gone through it and been through the other side. Yeah. And like, I saw you guys were okay and you guys made it. So that gave me a lot of hope that, okay, I'm in the thick of it now, but I'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> and now here, are like seven, well, it's 2021 now. So eight years later, yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> so when new people come, like, I just want to like give them a verbal hug and be like, you know what? Yeah. You're going to be okay. Yeah. Because you're okay. I'm okay. The others are okay. Yeah. Some, and they're not uh, alone. They're not they're alone. They're not alone. Yeah. And, even and it's not it's not just the victims of Will Jordan either. It's it's like all victims of, of a toxic relationship. And it's like I'm getting 
four or five letters a day from people who are reading the book and saying, my gosh, you know, finally I'm able to articulate what's actually happened, you know, and I'm able to understand don't tell anybody. why something, yeah. Because they feel shame because they feel embarrassed and ashamed by what's happened and they feel somehow they asked for it or they deserved it or something. Um, and that, that's that was one. my first feeling. My first feeling was I was so ashamed of myself. I yeah. that was shame was a very large feeling in the beginning. Yeah. And I was like, I couldn't believe it. Like, I was just so incredulous. Like, how did I, how did I, how, how, why? Like, yeah. I could not understand it. Yeah. And I was like. That, that's something that needs to change. That's that's something that, that, that my mission in life is is to make sure that actually that changes, that society changes. Because, I mean, one of the first things I had was people, when I first wrote The Bigamist, they said, are you going to write it under your own name? And I was Absolutely. like. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like, why wouldn't I? You know, and there was some sort of kind of perception of, of idiocy or something that you know i should be ashamed of having been a victim of a crime and, and people have something to stop that, um, shame. Absolutely. that is yeah. huge huge yeah. is is basically re-victimizing the victim that's got to stop because yeah. that is what keeps so many men and women in the dark with it because Very much so. they because society they know society's judgy and they know that Meet people are going to say mean things to them, and they don't want to have to deal with that. So a lot of them just stay not on, silent. Not on top of the sort of psychological torture they've already been through. Absolutely. You know? So it's it's a very it's a very you know it's it, it's tough. It is tough when you get those trolls. Every, uh, like uh, like I still get the occasional hate mail every once in a blue moon. By and large, most of it is very positive and and people who are grateful that, you know, we put a voice to a situation that nobody talks about. I mean, yes, yeah. it is now starting to become more commonplace and you're starting to see so many more documentaries and things like that about all this kind of like yeah. con behavior. Yeah. Um, it's becoming there, but we're not quite there yet mm -hmm. to where we can stop shaming the people who went through it, which was already this, tra this, traumatizing it, yeah. as it was. Yeah. I mean, they do tend to glamorize the con man or con woman, you know, as opposed to, you know, saying actually that's a crime and that's a criminal activity. And, you know, it, it's the, it's the survivors who should be, you know, held up and celebrated, yeah, not, not, they don't, the, not the criminal like themselves. They, yeah. They, they don't sit there and bash the person who actually did the conning, which is, you know the perpetrator they bashed the person who was the victim to begin with and i'm like yeah. what is wrong with people i like i'm like where's <laughs> well like, it's, you know? it's, it's, as i said uh, i think it was in the bigamous you know a hundred years ago if if a woman stood up and said she was raped then she would be branded Mm -hmm. the harlot you know sort of like etc and, and tarnished goods and all the rest of it you know whereas a man who'd done the raping would have been considered a stud you know uh, and uh, you know very commanding you know and society has changed in the last hundred years society now absolutely that's switched around you know oh, yeah, pe people the Me Too can, movement really yeah. has brought light to a lot of this mm -hmm. and i'm so thrilled to see that a lot of these you know bad actors are finally starting to be held responsible yeah. for very inappropriate behavior. So yeah. I, I'm so happy that finally women are starting to, and men, because it really happens on all sides. Yes, women are major, the majority, but I do hear from men and- As, as do I, I yeah. From, yeah. And, and I've heard from some trans people from the LGBT community. So it really happens across the entire mm -hmm. spectrum. And I'm so yeah. glad that people are able to start to get their power back. It's slow. We're still getting there. You know, the, the train is still chugging on the track, but we're finally starting to get to where yeah. finally, like, you know, people can take their power back. And I, yeah. like, I know for me, like in talking to you, reading your book, reading this book, it re reminded me of mm -hmm. why I keep doing this and that, why we keep helping people and yeah. it's, it's an absolutely beautifully written and oh. i absolutely loved it and i loved what i learned from it because i learned more things that i didn't know before so it's anecdotal and it's educational at the same time and <laughs> like i'm so proud of you like i couldn't oh. be more prouder that of all that you have accomplished how you turned such a horrible situation 
in your life. And that was scary for you because the kids were involved. And as a mother myself, I really cannot imagine the terror that you went through. I cannot. Mm -hmm. And like in reading what he put you through and you turned around and you empowered yourself and you gave yourself a voice and you gave others a voice because you gave me a voice. Um, <laughs> I'm going to try to cry. But Aww. you... I'm so proud of you and what you have done and what you've done for others and what you keep doing for others. So all the haters out there who want to hate, you know, <laughs> nah, you <laughs> are amazing. You're an amazing person. Aww. I will forever be grateful. You're always in my heart. I think of you a lot, even if like, if, it, if we go a few weeks, a few months and we don't talk or, you know, we just yeah. click in here and there with like little updates and, hey, we're doing this, I'm doing this, you know, how you doing? Facebook, you know, I read your Facebook updates, you have mine. So, um, yeah. so we keep in touch and we have our little group and, um, but I'm so, so, so proud of everything that you have done and, you. you know, from victims everywhere, I namaste you. Um <laughs> Thank you so because, much. Because truly, you say you saved me. You absolutely saved me. And I don't know what I would have become. I don't know what would have happened to me. Um, what I would have turned into if I didn't have your help to keep me sane. Through in right in the aftermath in those nine weeks of the sting operation. <laughs> um, through the trial that lasted like another added another year Did to the yeah. entire process and um and like not being able to get a restraining order because you know because the judge was like well we can't give you a restraining order on what if and I'm like okay so he has to hurt me before I can get him to not come That's near nuts. me absolutely nuts yeah no well, well you you were amazing I mean you were just in, totally inspiring coming through all of that I, I mean just yeah as I say not worthy you just you know I do feel like we are the kind of two pillars that kind of holding this up on either side of the the the, the pond you know um because it's it's just we just and it's not it's not actually an obsessive or a nasty thing it's just you know when it raises its head again we're there for anybody that comes forward and and to be there for the, vic the other victims that come forward but, and you know. inevitably there will be more it's going yep, to keep there happening will be. And, uh, and there will be the ones that find out the truth and still want to stay with him, which is their choice. As long as they, as long as they're informed, you know, as long exactly. as they're, they're and, you know, choosing and, to do that, it's fine. And yeah. I feel bad that there's, you know, the one that we just couldn't save, and yeah. it, it hurts a little, you know. Oh, I just want to like shake her. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, it's like you know, as I say, all we can do is inform. All we can do is 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 say, look, here's the information. Exactly. Um, you know, yeah. and if somebody wants to be with somebody who, who, you know, when they know that they're like that, that is their choice. You know, we don't, we, we're not there to make sure that he stays single. Uh, we're, we're there to sort of try and make sure that any victims have some support um, and that they, you know, if they want to, they can find out the truth. Mm -hmm. um, so, Absolutely. That's all we can do. All we he's can in do. his, what, he's in his like mid to late 50s now? Mid 50s, yeah. Mid 50s? Uh, yeah. So, two, I mean. He's two weeks older than me. <laughs> <laughs> So he's got, he's going for younger and younger women, though. He's, I think he's passing himself off as 35 now. Um, but the thing is, is that, like, at the time when I had met him, I was, goodness, I think I was 35, and he told me he was yeah. 38, and really he was, like, almost a decade older. But yeah. he, he really does keep himself in shape. He really does look way younger than he actually is yeah. so he can pass for younger but unfortunately he prefers young women and yeah. i don't think he really minds younger or older or you know it's it's i think it's the game more than anything else although you know sort of like so i think he he's probably got a bit of a range so I don't, but think, every I don't think he particularly while. targets young women in general. I think it's just whoever he catches in his net. I think it all um, stems. I think he still wants to feed that either. pedophile feeling every once in a while, which yeah. makes me want to vomit just thinking about yeah. it. And just even knowing what he had done, just 
like I'm so thankful, like my, my children were very rarely around him. Um, and I kept a pretty good distance and it was only a handful of times and it was never unsupervised. And people are like, how could you let him around your kids? Well, it's not like I let him babysit them or anything. I mean, <laughs> I mean like I, I work nights and he said he worked nights. So a lot of our meetings were by day, the kids were in school. So yeah, they, so very, it was very it rare well. that the kids were ever around. Yeah. So, um, I'm very thankful about that. Um, yeah. God knows, you know, where that would have led and, yeah. you know, I have a daughter, I have a son. I'm thankful. Yes. So, yes. and that's another thing that keeps, keeps me wanting to do this is so yeah. that he doesn't, he doesn't hurt another child. Yeah. And, no, absolutely. Um, it's one of the things that drove me to, to write the books. Um, both of them was the fact that, um, there was no information about him particularly um, before I went public with my story and, you know, mm -hmm. sort of like, and being, you know, having that information out there, having that, that face on the internet, having his name out there. Actually, it was one of the things that I'm getting a few uh, critical feedbacks about the book is that I use his name, Will Jordan throughout the whole thing. Uh, and there's a few bad reviews saying, you know, why does she always say Will Jordan? And there's, there's two reasons. That's one funny. is, one is that it's called Voldemorting uh, and that I don't want to say, oh, Will did this or Will did that. It feels really uncomfortable because it's personalizing him. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas if you actually, you, you kind of remove yourself personally by actually using somebody's full name, then it's, 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 it's not a kind of personal connection. And the other is, is drilling people to remember his name that, you know, Correct. it's not just Will, it's Will Jordan or it's Will and Malin Jordan. Um, so that, you know, if they do come across it or they have a friend who comes across some derivative of that name, they might actually go, ooh, hang on. And that's why um, I plastered all the aliases that I have ever come across because yes. the name I had wasn't Googleable. And no. for sure, I did my due diligence. You know, the story that he told me about his background and where he grew up, he told me he went to Oxford. I sure as heck went to Oxford's website. He said his he was raised um, by Oxford professors. I tried to look them up. I tried to go back through the archives. I tried to find these people. Like people think that I just took him at face value. I did a lot of research, but the thing yeah. is, because the entire thing was a grand lie, that's why I couldn't find anything because yeah. none of it was true. Yeah. And that's why when I finally, did, you know, went public, public, I put every single alias that like you told me that other victims told me that I could, that the police had told me that they found like other identification. I put all his aliases out there so that if he attempts to re reuse an alias, at least somebody can Google and they will find something. Yeah. So they, they're usually harder some, and harder. Yeah, but there's usually some derivative of his name, like of Liam Jones name. or or William Allen or you know, sort of like etc. So that there's there's usually some so he can say I mean when when the first name he gave me was William Allen. Um and uh, and then when I queried it, he, he said, Oh no, that's my middle name. Um but he so, came to me as, as Liam Allen, yeah. which Liam is actually Gaelic for William. And yeah. also it's, you know, if you're short in William, it's the last four letters of the word. Yeah. And Alan is his middle name. And then he's used Guillaume, which is French for William. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's, it's like there's things. sort of some, some sort of similarity. Yeah. Mm. Mm. He's always got a derivative going um, yeah. in some way, shape or form. And, um, and then like, yeah, he's gone by Guy, which is still short for Guillaume, which was still William. So... <laughs> It is always all some sorts, form all sorts, of his yeah. name, but yeah. it's, it, and it's brilliant though. It's brilliant because he Clever. always correct. And yeah. one thing you can't fault him on, he, he's a smart guy, you know, for whatever he is, he's, he's, he thinks things through. Um, he's just, uh, otherwise he's just living by the seat of his pants. Although I'm noticing, I'm noticing we're supposed, we're supposed to be chatting for half an hour and it's nearly 40 minutes now. <laughs> And I'm watching your little kitty in the corner. <laughs> I know. I just like that the, 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 you can't, I've, I've, I've actually put carpet down so that the, the dog, you don't get the click, click, click of the dog on the wooden floors. <laughs> can't stop the cats. The cats will go where they want. <laughs> cats don't care. I, mine, oh, well, mine was sitting next to me, but I don't, she left me. <laughs> she's, she's left. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, well, we'll tie this up. Um, so I, it's, it's so lovely, as always, talking to you. So, um, what I will say is that you know this is, this is our new online version of, of a book launch. So that that's the the 
the book is The Psychopath. Uh, and it's going to be available from today. <laughs> so, yes, I'm, I'm so excited. It's on audiobook. It's as a hardback, it's as paperback, and it's an ebook. Um, the audiobook is is read by yours truly. Yours truly. I can't even speak anymore. Yours truly. So, um, yes, you'd, you'd hear the book in my own voice. Um, and thank you for joining sure me. I was so glad that I was able to pick it up on first reads on Amazon. Yes. And I was able to basically read it ahead of this of this official day. Yeah. Um, so I was so excited to be able to do it. I read it in four days, three days, four days. Um, it was a good, quick read um, and absolutely fascinating. And and for sure, read The Bigamist yeah. and then read this and yeah. you can have the entire big story put yeah. together. So for the, sure. The, the idea is you're supposed to be able to read either in either order or you, know, so you can read The Psychopath on its own. But actually, personally, I think you're probably better reading The Bigamist first because then you have more context. Um, but you can read the, them both, supposed, no matter personally. what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, read them both. Read them both. Read them both. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Oh, Michelle, thank you so much for joining me. Really, um, I, it's been so much fun, actually. Just it, it always is. To, to it chat always is. You. It's but always a pleasure. You. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. We're, we're going to both be on Twitter and Facebook answering questions. So if you've got any questions for us, just just tweet away and, and we'll we'll answer you. And we will be right. there. We'll be there. Take care. See ya.